Columbia, I fell in love with several years ago. Uh, I went there for the first time. Once I got to know the Colombian people, I felt completely at ease around them. If you don't speak Spanish perfectly, but you just try a little bit, they'll always encourage you. And the funny thing is, they always like or tell me how good my Spanish is, which I know is a complete lie, but it's really nice of them to say that. As far as Colombia, you know, like the major cities, Bogota, Medellin, Cartagena, that's where I started. That's why I recommend everyone else begin their journeys. Just because, you know, they have the infrastructure, they're set up, it's a good way to dip into the country. And then after that, man, you got to go see the rest of Colombia. You've got to go to Santa Marta. You got to go to Tirona. You've got to go to some of the more rural areas because that's really where the beauty of Colombia is. It's untamed. It's beautiful. So many people still hang on to that idea of Colombia being a really dangerous place. Until you've been to a place, you really can't judge it. I thought like you thought, and I went, and now I can tell you it's one of my favorite destinations and one of the safest destinations I've ever been to. So people really need to give Columbia a shot. And if this show doesn't convince them to do that, then I don't know what will. But this, it's a great country with a lot of beautiful destinations. It's really an undiscovered gem. Hey guys, this is Carlos Phoenix with the Indian Lounge, and we are back with the Raw Behind Raw Travel. And as always, uh, with this particular show, I have our guest, Rob Rose. How's it going, Rob? Good, man. You're probably uh, going to get the tired, exhausted Rob, but uh, this is probably more reality. This We're going to keep it real, so yeah. I'm really exhausted, man. I'm really tired, but it's cool, man. I'm, I'll, I'll try to rally for the interview. <laughs> okay, very good. So you're you're in Miami um, yep. this time around. Um, yes. Normally we talk from you're in New York and I'm in Atlanta. Um, right. But, uh, you know, I guess you're out and about doing uh, business and getting this show out and about. So um, yep. now the um, episodes that we'll probably be discussing uh, relate to uh, a portion of South America that's dear to me because my parents are from there. And... Yep. Um, and my wife happens to be from there as well. So, Colombia. Yeah, man. I mean, that's, that's my favorite country. Not to play favorites, and I hate to do it, but I, it's, it is my favorite country, bar none, outside of the United States, and sometimes more than the United States, like can, in I moments like that. right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like my second home, man, and I feel so at home there. Um, in particular, Medellin and, uh, and uh, you know, the whole coffee region, mm -hmm. it reminds me of my Tennessee home a little bit, but with it's more fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went, um, I was just there this uh, earlier this year in January uh, celebrating yeah. the holidays. And, yeah. um, and we were in Pereira, and we also stopped by where, um, where coffee's grown just yeah. on the roads. I mean, you're the side of the yeah. roads is all coffee beans it's pretty wild right so it is so, so um is. you you uh it, it's wild uh to see, to seeing parts of the country that i'm my parents are from and stuff um you got to check out a couple of cool places uh right. and um in particular uh you, you went to check out some coffee you had some coffee i noticed that um yeah but uh the nightlife yeah. was uh pretty interesting yeah, we normally don't show that because I feel like that's like another show almost. I mean, mm -hmm. nightlife is part of travel. Um, first of all, I'm getting old and I don't really feel like going out all the time. Uh, and second of all, like, you know, there was that whole wild on E thing for those who can remember Brooke Burke, you know, traveling right. to all these beach places. And that was fun. I mm -hmm. thought it was a fun show. But, um, you know, our show is trying to be a little more – less surface than that but well it that added a lot of that, color and texture to to what you normally show absolutely uh, man absolutely i mean i think like if the nightlife is noteworthy then we should cover it and the nightlife in medellin in particular is noteworthy so that's why we covered it i mean it's amazing it's it's legendary and, and, and uh, what, what a lot of people wonderful. don't realize or understand i think 
is uh, when you're driving down the road, I mean, you're hearing yeah. music from places back to back yeah. um, while you're just outside. Uh, and yes. that music just draws you in. You just want to come almost like check out each place. Well, there's there's nightlife and then there's like the culture. And the both of them have lots of music, plenty of good time, you know, just having a good time. And I think that's sort of the essence of Colombians. It's it's not as it's not just about nightlife and going to thumping electronic music and everybody dancing and spinning out to four in the morning. Like I'm over that. That has right. nothing. I have nothing to do with that. But um, the roadside bars, you know, like the little uh, stands where you can go get some food, mm -hmm. you know, and have a uh, and listen to authentic uh, music just blasting all the time. Um, it's amazing, man. Colombians just they just know how to live. And I think it may have something to do with having endured uh, so much misery for so long. And, mm -hmm. and now they. I really appreciate the good times, which, you know, this is, these are the good times for Columbia. Absolutely. Not that there's some issues, there's some issues still there. You know, it's still very much, I was reminded quite often that, oh yeah, this is Columbia. It's some really messed up stuff. But yeah. by and large, it's, it's really uh, a great place to just escape and uh, see how people with very little can just enjoy life so much. It's and that's, amazing. that's huge. That's key. Um, you know, being right. there, uh, we did talk a lot about the politics and corruption, right. but that's in every country. And look at the United States, right. for example. But yeah. um, but the, you're you're completely surrounded by beauty right. at all times. I mean, right. anywhere you look, there's a, a beautiful mountainscape, or just clouds right. coming over the mountains, or or, or uh, just the. It's a very beautiful country from almost head to toe. It's hard to to miss it. Um, now uh, you went. Uh, in this episode, I believe, was the, uh, that, well, you went to see the hostel. Now, how, how was, did you, did you get to stay in the hostel or did you just kind of check it out? Oh, oh you're talking about in Bogota, uh, right. Casa Platypus. Right. Casa Platypus, uh, Herman Escobar, uh, is the owner of Casa Platypus. He's been to 120 countries. He's a legendary traveler. And, um, Herman is great, and Casa Platypus was like the pioneer of tourism in Colombia. So in Bogota, when nobody was going to Colombia, and that's the thing he mentions in our interview at the time when he put up his hostel, uh, less than 5,000 Americans came to Colombia annually. That's not many people at all. It, probably half of them. I don't know what half of them were probably doing something yeah, illicit, exactly. right? Yeah, the, and there was so, one of the times of... of um... Yeah, yeah, the, Miami all the violence and, and the violence, correct. Yeah, exactly. And um, but now I think he said in the interview like half a million a year, and that's still a drop in the bucket compared to what I think is going to happen in Colombia. Because mm. once you go, like Bogota is, is amazing as well. I love Bogota. It's a little frigid for me. You know, I like to go two or three days. But like you stay in the Casa Platypus right there in La Candelaria. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful experience, and um, it's just a different kind of experience. You know, it's uh, it's just uh, you know you're a little everything's a little cold. You you get the high altitude, and but you can just those little alleyways and, and crooked streets up, up winding, you know, cobblestone streets and, and La Candelaria are beautiful, and you know people will tell you don't go out at night and blah blah blah. Hey, maybe it's dangerous. I never ran into that. I would mm -hmm. say, you know, use caution at night as you would anywhere. But uh, I, I recommend staying in La Candelaria uh, just because it's so beautiful and historic. You can stay in the north uh, in Bogota, you know, the Zona Rosa area where right. all the nightlife is there in Bogota. And it's nice, too, but it doesn't have the same feel as La Candelaria, the old city. And, um, you know, if, you, if you're going to stay more than maybe three or four days, mix it up. See which one you like best. Right. But, uh, you know, for my money, Casa Platypus is a great deal, man. They got a great breakfast in the mornings, and it's a charming hostel. And uh, Herman, if you get to meet the man, the myth, the legend, Herman Escobar, uh, tell him Raw Travel sent you, and he'll cut you a good deal. Oh, nice. Very nice. So we should put a yeah. little coupon at the bottom here. So yeah. uh, now um, you, you also went to this. I don't remember what you called it, but it was uh, outdoors, and you can rent the. Uh, what do you call that? Oh, El Peñol. 
where we saw so. the big where we saw the rock and we rented uh wait what i took uh i canopied well you canopied um what what the which, which, that, that alone was insane the whole superman yeah. thing uh <laughs> let me think canopy yeah 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 but that was that was in Guatape. uh but i mean uh the next episode like we this is divided into two episodes so you got bogota cartagena and medellin which aired this past weekend 105 and then what's coming up this weekend is rural colombia which you've had a sneak peek of mm-hmm. carlos so you know and basically there we went to san vicente which is in the coffee regions and the natural thermal spas right and uh, that was amazing. That's, that was just an amazing. I mean, the nature, the beauty of San Vicente, the termales de San Vicente, right. the ther- they're heated by volcanoes. Right. And so they, they put us up to our uh, heads full of uh, hot volcanic sand. And it, I got to tell you, it was a great feeling. I was loving my job at that moment. I really was. <laughs> yeah, it, you, it looked it. Um, uh, I was getting pampered. It was awesome. That rarely happens. You know, most of the time I'm. Pretty You're miserable. yourself up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're yeah. all for the show, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, you, you had a lot of ladies on, on these episodes. A lot of, I had a lot of ladies? Well, you, you know, usually you're, you're out there with the guys and you're rugging it oh. out, but th- this time around. Well, that was our first episode, so I think what we tried to do, because the show does have like a lot of um, outdoor adventure energy, but we are, we're always trying to mix it up, man. We want... Um, to show how, you know, travel for females in particular is a different animal, man. They have to be a little more careful. Mm. Uh, but, you know, in general, we want to mix it up, make sure that everybody's well represented. The show is actually doing quite well among the female demographic, which surprised me because, you know, it's running behind a lot of sports and a lot of mm. stations and stuff. But I think that's because of the give back and the good stuff that we're doing. Mm. And I think... Um, also, secondarily, guys are watching sports, so they haven't really discovered us yet. Uh, you know, but by and large, you know, we just want to make it balanced. We want to make sure the show has something for everybody, you know. And um, in, um, in Medellin, I remember there was Paula. She was with the Tourism Bureau. And then there was another uh, young lady. I forgot her name. who took us out for the nightlife. And then... Um, I can't remember who took us on the spots, but it's a mixture, dude. It's, you know, we don't really think about it. We're just like, oh, if we get too many guys and we're like, we need some females in energy here. And uh, I've never seen where we've had just, you know, because it is some, sometimes hard. Um, I remember we were filming in Belize or somewhere and we were like, you know what? There's been nothing but dudes. This is not good. We need to make sure that, you know, everybody's represented. So we work really hard, you know, to try to make sure that it's balanced. Uh, it's subtle. But, you know, people might notice that stuff. So we want to make sure everything's, you know, balanced as much as possible. Now, I do have a couple of production questions. Um, okay. when, when I was in Colombia, now, I'm uh-huh. not like you. I wasn't as organized. Um, I don't have, like, a production crew. But right. um, every time I tried to pull out a camera, I had a cop coming up to me. Really? Now, how, 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 how did you guys uh, Where were you? Prepare? Bogota? Uh, Bogota? No, this was actually in Pereira. Um, Wow. I, didn't, I didn't get to go about that this year, uh, but you know I'm, I'm working on it. Maybe later this year, tomorrow, next year. But you were um, just shooting in Pereira, like around town, and a policeman came up to you. Yeah, they were like, you know, no, no, you can't shoot video. I'm like, never. I'm a tourist. never happened. To me. <laughs> really? That's crazy. That's oh, that's well, interesting. Interesting. The only time it did happen to me was in Bogota as a tourist, and I had my little camera out, and I. Um, was shooting uh, like around the military base or, you know. Well, that makes sense. Some, were you, was there military stuff involved or nothing like no, that? No, it was just uh, like a mall. A mall. Uh, probably just some security guys being, you know, playing Barney Five. I guess so. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. You got a big camera, small camera? No, tiny. I mean. Tiny camera? Uh, well, I mean, this, this is probably the largest, um, you know. Yeah, no, that's a tourist camera, man. No, I mean, it shoots HD, but, you know, you know that's what's funny, dude. Like, I, Columbia, first of all, we never had a problem. Our cameras are, are bigger than that, and we never had a problem. And we got three people. I mean, in Medellin, we had the Paula from the Tourism Bureau, so we had no problem there. Right. But, you know, in Medellin was where I was living, so that we sort of knew what was going on. Bogota, never had a problem. Uh, Cartagena, certainly no problems, and we didn't have any special permissions. of the time, we're shooting without any permits 
or special permission from anyone. I would say 95% of the time. Uh, the only time that we ever had an issue was in Mexico shooting the ruins. They tried to shut us down one time. And, uh, and they then usually, we tried to charge a fee just to even allow you to use a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, even if you're a tourist, they want you to pay a fee. Right. You know? But if it's commercial production, I understand that. And uh, you know, we don't want to use images without percent. Even though reality is we're in the United States, they're in Mexico. So once you get the images, it's hard for them to stop you. Right. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, like, it's really short-sighted of them to try to do that because it's, like, it's a travel show promoting your country to get more people to come see your right, ruins. Exactly. <laughs> be so short-sighted and I- idiotic about it. The only time we really had a problem like that was Belize. And speaking of short-sighted, you know, the government made us, you know, get a permit and uh, to even be in the country, to really? even shoot at all. And huh. what they didn't know is by the time I told them I was in Belize and was emailing them for permission, I was already in Guatemala. I had already left. So I paid the fee to shoot in Belize after, after I had already shot. Yeah, and I did it not because I had to, because I... You know, want to do the right thing, yeah, and yeah, I don't, don't want to respect be. it. Sure, especially when yeah, I go so back at some point. Maybe I doubt it. Uh, doubt it. After Belize episodes air, that I'll probably never go back. So that's I mean, interesting because the Belize advertises a lot in terms of like they absolutely the, do the, the uh, beautiful place to retire type of look. Absolutely, man, and uh, just you know, be careful what you're told. I mean, Panama does as well. I mean, you ask me, in my opinion, I can rank all the Central American countries, and Belize will be at the bottom. Hmm. Um, not because of the people, I love the people, but because of the, the slick way that it's marketed and the money and the fact that the places that you're normally going to go as a tourist, you're going to be really isolated, I think, from the Belizean people. And tourism doesn't seem to really help them. You know, there's, hmm. it's, they're, 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 cra- they're really, really poor. Guess what? They're really, really poor in Guatemala, yet tourism is crucial to the indigenous way of life and keeping the indigenous way of life around in a sustainable manner. And the tourism bureau in Guatemala, rather than try to extort cash from you, they try to help you tell their story about their beautiful country. That's how it should be. Right. It's idiotic to do otherwise. So, you know, we'll deal with idiocy. I, tourism bureaus, I'm ambivalent. It depends on the country. Um, you know, every country has different government. Some tourism bureaus are good, like Guatemala. Some are not so good, which I won't name, because they don't even return an email. Hmm. Excuse me. There's a television show from the United States trying to shoot in your country, doing your job for you, and you can't return an email or a phone call? That's absurd. That's incompetence to the nth degree. But that's what you're dealing with when you go to some of these you know, countries where you know, the title of being a tourism bureau chief or whatnot is a payoff for getting someone elected or whatever, you know? And so, you know, that's the idea behind raw travel is you don't need all that. We don't need all that. We do, we're going to see it as what a traveler, because a regular traveler is not going to have the tourism bureau walk you through a city. They're not going to tour you around. You're a regular traveler, so you're on your own. At best, you're going to get a brochure from them. And and maybe if you're lucky, some good advice Mm -hmm. or a nice website. But by and large, you're on your own or if you go through with a travel agency. So we want to be treated like a, tr- a, a, like a true traveler. And if a true traveler has a bad experience, then we're going to, and we have a bad experience, then we're having a bad experience because a true traveler would have a bad experience. And so right. we want to report the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it's never all good, and it's never all bad. It's and all that's the raw sense. right there. <laughs> that's the raw truth, Carlos. You heard it here. Uh, so um, now a, a little bit uh, back to Colombia. Um, yes. What were your, you know, peak moments in Colombia? Well, it's hard to say, man, because I've been I've been to Colombia so many times, and I was living there at the time we filmed it. Right. But I tell you what, though, this is this. I had just moved to Colombia when we started filming it, and uh, I'd say the peak moment for me was the first day I was on camera, and I wanted to quit. I I thought this is the big mistake. Hmm. This will never be on air. I'm wasting everybody's time, and I'm making an absolute ass of myself that's what i thought those were the three things now what caused that i just uncomfortable man i just don't want to be on camera i felt like i was hamming it up being fake i just didn't want to be fake and you know he was like smile you need to smile and i'm like i don't want to smile you know like well you're on tv now you really need to smile and i'm like and they're like you look miserable and i'm like well i am miserable because i'm on camera (laughs) it was just an uncomfortable feeling but here's what happened after like the second day i started getting into it 
not being on camera, but I just sort of forgot the camera was there. He, here's the only problem with Columbia is that it was my first episode on camera. I sort of beat myself up when I see it. You know, I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's sort of greenhorn there. You know, like I'm much more comfortable on camera now, and it's such a great country. I sort of wish I had a do-over. But the content itself, I think, is so good because Columbia is so good that it covers all that up. And yeah, I enjoyed I, it. I enjoyed, uh, you know, seeing the episode. I enjoyed, yeah. you know, and, and maybe it's because there's a connection for me. But, yeah. um, but you know, even even if a person wants to go visit, uh, I really thought it, it gave me, uh, and, and because I've been there, uh, I'm kind of like backing up what you showed, is um, it's a great place to visit. The people are really friendly, and you state that a lot in the episodes. You talk about how the people are, and they really, you know, I live in the South, and sure, they talk about, oh, you know, the South, everybody's friendly, but... Yeah. This takes it to another level. I mean, yeah. And, and and these are people who who, in all truth, almost have nothing, and yet they give in such a way that right. um, you you think they they have a lot of stuff, right? You know, beyond what they're presenting to you right now, and there's right. there's so much to give. So you know, the food is phenomenal. Um, oh yeah. If you're into the drinking, the, the drinking could be phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> but um, stay away from the aguardiente. The aguardiente, I, I have to say, you you had that the aguardiente. Oh, dude! I mean, I grew up on that stuff. Okay, hey, all right. I listen for me, can't even smell it anymore after really? I a couple of bad experiences. Yeah, I'm just like, like I said, did, did I've sort of you? moved beyond that in my life, huh? Did did it hit you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I went to a couple of uh, I went to the Real Sucio. They had a Carnival oh. del Diablo, the whole town. I think I was the only gringo there, and they were like, "Gringo, oh. hey, hey!" And they're all feeding me. Yeah. moonshine whiskey stuff like that and to me um you know i'm just i just don't do all that kind of stuff right. and i i couldn't hang man i'm not i'm gonna lie i couldn't hang and my friend told me he's like dude you're not supposed to drink it put it up to your lips take a little sip and put it down otherwise you're gonna get of course you're gonna get wasted and i was like yeah, they, oh, they get man. into the shots uh and for whoever's never had aguardiente yeah. it, it, it's a very strong licorice taste yeah um uh, maybe a touch of sambuca, <laughs> maybe. But anyway, um, yeah. so uh, you you go into some very tranquil areas, um, and in I was extremely jealous because those are places that I'd never visited. I've gone to you know the the volcanic pools and uh, yeah. with the hot, really hot water and the freezing cold water and all that stuff. But you, you went into some areas that I was like, wow, you know, I never, I got to go back just to see some of those areas where you can just chill out and relax and be on your own? Well, the most remote area, I think, is Tyrona, Parque Tyrona uh, from Santa Marta. And, you know, we had the uh, shaman, uh, the chipchas, right. the Indians, do the ceremony with me, uh, a cleansing. And um, they were really nice people as well. I mean, you know, what they did was, you know, it, it cost money to do. <laughs> you know, so they're doing it for money, right. but they're, 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 that's their real culture, you know? And like I said, for Guatemala, if tourism or travel can help sustain a culture, then I'm okay with that because, you know, these guys are, are they, they live pretty bare bones mm -hmm. and, uh, but yet they're still holding on to their culture. And if you want people to still hold on to their culture, then you got to give them a reason to, because they're looking over there across the, the road and they're seeing people in the developed world, you know, with their Game Boys or whatever, you know, their cell phones and stuff. And that's got to be luring to them. But yet they're still staying true to their culture, still dress all in white. And the thing about Tyrona, you, I, you heard about the Lost City, right? You hike three days to go to the Lost City. I think it was discovered in the 70s, but it's like uh, an ancient uh, Indian civilization lived there. The Chipchas, I think they're called. And uh, it's, a, it's a brutal hike. I haven't done it, but I hear it's just incredible. And it used to be really dangerous. It's not anymore, uh, at least the last one we were there. Uh, I think it, Columbia's pretty much under control. Um, you can go almost anywhere. There's a few areas that when we were filming to go to the Amazon, I think we were going to go to uh, Patagonia, I think it's called. Okay. And we were advised against it, mainly because of me. And not just because of me being a non-Latino or non-Colombian, but also because he had TV equipment. He just thought, you know what? Why risk it? 
And so we went to Leticia to upriver to a place called Puerto Nariño, uh, Tres Bandera, uh, Fronteras, three, three uh, borders right. where Brazil, Peru, and Colombia all come together because that's safe. Mm -hmm. And um, Puerto Nariño is a very eco-friendly type of little town where they recycle everything pretty much. They try to live as green as possible. Right. And, um, you know, it, it was um, – uh, I don't regret going there. It was, it was going to the Amazon was the most incredible three days probably of my life really? travel. It was amazing. Now, see, in, in my mind, being a city boy yeah. like you are, yes. um, I think about going to the Amazon and I'm prepared for my worst nightmares. Right. You know, because I can only imagine how supremely hot and humid it must be. Yes. Yes. Um, the bugs, the mosquitoes, you know, right. are, are probably in droves. Right. And then uh, you jumped into the water. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and they're known, the Amazon is known for the piranhas and, right. and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, they had piranha there, yeah. Uh, so what was that like? Well, they were, you know, they told me that the piranha there don't eat live flesh, meaning that, you know, if I were floating dead in the river, they would, you know, gnaw away at me. But in that area of the Amazon, they don't eat, you know, animals and so it's not exactly an urban myth. I just think those piranha are in Brazil. Okay. Uh, but there are other things in the Amazon River uh, that can, like little viruses that can find their way up through any opening into your stomach. And I'll be 100% honest with you, I didn't feel great after that trip for a few weeks afterwards. Okay. And I wondered, did I get something or am I just like feeling blah? Uh, I don't know, dude. I don't know. But here's the thing. Nobody enjoys – hot humid weather mosquitoes right. i don't know anybody that enjoys all that yet you so, said yeah it's the three best days so so give me some right. information why yeah that's what i'm saying like nobody enjoys that yet it's the best i think it's because the the pleasure must be worth the pain like if it's nobody would ever go to the amazon if it was all just misery but like we walked into our hut and immediately upon arrival there's a little baby owl Oh, meeting yeah. us and he's not a pet right he's from the wild he just took up and we ended up like we could pet him and he was mm. so cute man and we named him baba buoy <laughs> and we finally had to kick him out because he just shat all over our equipment and you know owls stay up at night i was like you do realize owls are up at night and we're trying to sleep so we had to kick him out but the wildlife there is insane like it was like i felt like dr doolittle man there were just like ducks and geese and monkeys mm. and you know, like, and they were just like not afraid of mankind, and you're just not you, and they're not in a zoo. You're in their zoo, right? You know what I'm saying, right? And it's it's crazy. Now the life expectancy in the Amazon, I think, is around mid fifties. Uh, you could tell people lived really hard. Uh, if you got bit by a snake, for example, you might be a long ways from the anti venom. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of ways to die in the Amazon. We hiked through there, and I didn't think we were ever going to make it. Dude, it's rough, mm. but it's awesome. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Well, I love it. Especially because now it's a story you can tell. Absolutely. I lived through it. I had an opportunity afterwards, uh, about a year or later, to go to Peru. All expenses paid, by the way, for eight days in the Amazon. And uh, I was going to do it. It had nothing to do with the fact that I was both dreading it and looking forward to it. But uh, I had a scheduling conflict trying to get this show off the ground, and I mm -hmm. couldn't go. Eight days in the Amazon, whoo, that's like eight weeks, man. That's a long – because there's really <laughs> nothing to do. There's no right. internet. There's no electri – their electricity is only on you know, for a few hours a day. Uh, there, you get really bored until you get used to that, and then you really find a stillness within. And that's what it's all about. We're all too stimulated, as you know. I'm way overstimulated right now, as you can tell. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not a happy camper either. You know, like I'm a happy, you can become a more, we're not supposed to live like this. I do believe that. We're supposed to live like we live in the Amazon. We might die quicker, but yeah, I think that's the way we're supposed to live. You know, yeah. our bodies are, are equipped for that. So, um, and then now on the next episode, on the next episode, you go up north. And yeah. um, there's a lot of things that I never knew about, my, like it's my parents' country. Uh, for example, uh, a whole area of the country where they don't even really speak Spanish. 
Yeah. Yes. Well, are you talking about Spanish? Com- right. It's, okay. a, it's a combination of Spanish and, and I guess some authentic language they have. Yeah. San Basilio de Palenque, which is outside of Cartagena, the African village. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're uh, living a lot like uh, like you feel like you're in Africa. Mm-hmm. I've never been to Africa, but I felt like it. And they speak um, their own native language, which is a mixture of African mixed with Spanish. And, and they give us a lesson. Uh, we had a typical meal like they have in San Basilio de Palenque. Mm-hmm. Um, very hard to get to. I've had a lot of emails. By the way, I've never received so many Twitter, Facebook, and emails from one episode so far than I did last week with Colombia. Wow. So there's a lot of interest in Colombia. But most of my emails were about San Basilio de Palenque or Cartagena, which is San Basilio is right outside of Cartagena. And that comes from the blog entry. They haven't seen the show yet. But <laughs> when they see the show, they'll, they'll see, they'll, they'll, um, they're really going to dig it. They're really going to dig it. Now, um, what, 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 do you th- what do you think people really get from, let's say, the next episode? Uh, like one of the big things that, I, that blew my mind was uh, the, uh, the stories of the slave trade that was there. Right. Um, I never learned that right. uh, about Colombia. I didn't know that there was uh, a slave trade there. Yeah. And so, so you, you did uh, you know, enlighten me to that. Um, yeah. And the fact that it's still part of their history and their culture and it's represented uh, everything from sculptures to uh, their their life livelihood, their, you know, Sancocho yeah. uh, being, uh, you know, f- food that they had uh, created in order to survive as a slave. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the slave trade isn't really talked about by any country in Latin America that I'm aware of that much in the history books. Uh, and that has to do with our, uh, my producer, Renzo, he's been working with, about Af- with Afro-Latinos on a documentary for a long time about Afro-Latinos as the untold story. Uh, and, you know, it's, um, it, we try to work that into every episode because in every, it, that it makes sense, you know, where there is an African population because they're not used to being told and they're used to being ignored and marginalized. And I don't think that's right. People need to know these stories. And in a place like Cartagena, that's where the slave trade really took place. Wow. And so what I found ironic was that amid so much pain is so much beauty now. Right. And people are, it's a tourist destination, you know. And uh, the Afro-Latino experience is very different from the Afro-American American experience. Right. And uh, what I find is when we cover these parts that in typical African-American cities, like your home city, Atlanta, they tune in. Um, and I, I would imagine that's because there's some interest level there from maybe African Americans about learning about Afro Latinos, right. everybody. But you know, in particular, in urban cities where there's a big African American population, I've noticed it. Could just be a coincidence, but I, I don't think so. Uh, and I'll go ahead and go on record and say there's going to be more of it, even when we go to Argentina. You don't think about the Afro p- presence being there, but we're going to talk about it. Uruguay. We <laughs> talk about it because. Nobody else is covering that. Nobody else is talking about it. So we felt like it's our responsibility to talk about it because it's interesting. It's not just because no one's doing it. It's because it's also very interesting. So we want you know to talk about it. All right. Well, I'm going to, um, I guess, cut the show off here. Uh, uh, I know you can't tell, but um, your, your image has been freezing up. Yeah, I think my battery's going down, Carlos. Okay. Right, so, buddy, but so. um, but I think uh, you know, we, we were able to touch upon a lot of the things that you you were able to do in in Colombia. Is there anything in particular you wanted to, to get out before we we depart? Before I freeze, <laughs> uh, completely. No, man. Just you know, I would tell people just go to Colombia. Uh, you know, get rid of the fear. Uh, just don't don't believe the stereotypes. As with any place, be careful. Mm-hmm, uh, exactly. You know, as just as I am here in Miami. Because it's Miami, right. just like I am in New York, because it's New York, man. I mean, I will tell you this. When you go to Columbia, you don't see on the headlines every day somebody grabbing a gun and doing some mass shootings, which we're seeing here in the U.S. Exactly. And, dude, uh, that's cause for concern. We have a lot of cause for concern, man. And uh, so true. I don't want to hear any nonsense about, oh, it's dangerous in Columbia. Dude, it's dangerous here. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, you know, over there, there's a, a, an awkward unity. Um 
Yeah. I don't think they can, I don't think even their people can pinpoint it. Um, they just know that they've gone through certain uh, things in their history together, right. and and they live off of that, right? And and they don't. And they're all they're all yeah. You're right. They're 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 unified in saying you know what we're not gonna just go back and be uncivilized like totally. that. We're not gonna allow people to be uncivilized, and and they will correct other people, you know, and and they have a, a way. I call it Colombian justice. Is someone I saw it in Medellin at Parque Yera, Somebody tried to steal a purse and. You know, they had the guy down kicking him, and I can't say that I agree with it, mm-hmm. but it had no – they knew to call the police was going to be nothing, and so they just take care of it themselves. And, right. you know, it's, it's, it's somewhat refreshing in a way, and it's sad in another way. I felt sort of sick afterwards. I didn't like it. But, you know, they don't have, you know, the police. But, the, you know, the thing about Colombia is that the police are pretty much, uh, I, I would say, the best of Latin America in terms of, like, at least – you know, they're your friend. You can't, you don't, don't hesitate to go talk to them, you know, as, right. a, as a tourist, you know, in most cases, you know, exactly. as always. Carlos, I'll, I'm going to sign off here, man. Is that cool? Because I know I'm going to yeah, die I'm, on Yeah, because I don't want to have you freeze up and all that stuff. But yeah. um, right. guys, keep watching. Check out rawtravel.tv for local listings. The show is great. I mean, when you consider how small the production is, but um, I yeah. think he froze. <laughs> um, and... Um, and check us out because we're going to keep talking about the show and, and give you some insights so that way maybe you'll be interested in seeing the next episode as well. Thank you, Rob. Thank right. you, audience. Thanks, Carlos. Keep watching. Right, Take care. On the next Raw Travel, we head to Colombia's rural hinterlands to visit the isolated towns, rustic coffee farms, and natural thermal spas. Then things really get wild and woolly when we journey to the amazing Amazon.